Victorian oil lamp. Four swords, got them in sight. Assorted cane furniture. Hmm. Yeah, cleaned up, that'll be all right. <laughs> got some more of them somewhere. Yeah, one Indian carpet in my bedroom. <laughs> One stuffed Indian tiger. That's going to be difficult. <laughs> oh, God, blimey, curry again. How do you know? I could smell you coming up the road. <laughs> well, you like curry. I oh, know, dear. We've had it five times already, and it's still only Thursday. We even had it for breakfast once. Hey, look at me, I'm going brown. Oh, <laughs> good thing this weather, mate, keeps you warm. Hey, look at that lot. Only nine and six. I don't know how he does it. Well, I do, mate. When did you last see a cat round here? <laughs> don't be disgusting. If you don't eat it, I'll eat it. I'll cook you something else. No, thank you. I don't want any more of your Jimmy Young cock-ups. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with that lot? If you must know, I'm getting some props together for the next production at the Civic Hall. Oh, good. Are they on the air roll again? It's good publicity. We catch the credit in the programme. Costumes and properties by step to and sub. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you bother. People don't want to see that rubbish. The last one you brought me to. Richard the 111th. Richard the Third, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Shakespeare. Terrible. It was the way they did it, mate. Ten people in the house, including you and me. What a disaster. Curtain goes up, old matey hobbles on. Now is the winter of our discontent, and his ump falls off. <laughs> <laughs> they're amateurs, Harold. Well, of course they're amateurs. I mean, that's what makes it all so worthwhile. As a matter of fact, they're developing into a very good little company, and very competent. And now, for one, I'm proud to be associated with them. Cobblers! <laughs> All you're interested in is knocking off the leading lady. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with it. I, I admit, I do admire Madeleine Bannerman very much. But purely on an artistic level. Well, they want all this stuff for. What load of old rubbish are they doing this week? We are performing a new play, especially written for us by our producer, Rupert Fafanes Muir. <laughs> and we are performing it at the Civic Hall next week. We? Yes, we. I'm in it. <laughs> you? On the stage? And why not? Will the folks drop me down, make me laugh? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I fail to see anything amusing. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> Lovely, darling. I saw your Hamlet, darling. Up yours, darling. And kiss me <laughs> song, darling. It's not like that at all. Oh, of course it is, actors. They're all poofs. <laughs> all that makeup. Love it, they do. Love it. I don't think I care to continue this discussion, Pratt. Excuse me.
What are you going to call yourself? Lawrence O'Toole? Ah, <laughs> oh, don't be silly, Harold. You can't act. It takes years. You have to go to school. Not necessarily. Lots of actors have started in rep. That's the finest training you can have. I mean, take Carl Richard III. He never went to drama school. He's an income tax collector. <laughs> Rupert says that uh, I, I, I'm a natural. <laughs> He's very impressed with my audition. What did you give him? Uh, Hamlet, Shylock, Henry V. No, uh, uh, it was all sort of thrust upon me. I, I didn't have uh, time to kind of learn anything. I was uh, scene shifting at the time, and a leading man dropped out, and uh, he was transferred to another bus depot. <laughs> and, uh, I, I was there, so I just got up and did it. What? So, Marlon Brando, the taxi scene from Underwater Front. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, Charlie, Charlie. Oh, no, Charlie. <laughs> I'm your brother, Charlie. I, I could have... I was world-class, Charlie. I, I, I could have been a contender, Charlie. I did for you, Charlie. I, I took a dive for you, Charlie. Oh, Charlie, 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 Charlie. <laughs> well, you know how it goes. And I gave you the job? Yes. Well, stuff my old boots. <laughs> I thought I was very good. Rupert says I've got potential and he's been around. He's a professional. I've seen his press clippings. Alden, Bradford and Barnsley. <laughs> well, if he's that good an actor, why isn't he in the West End? Oh, well, he had to give up acting because it made him very ill. Uh, he left him with a weak bladder and he can't stay on stage for long periods. <laughs> oh, a right old goon show we're going to get here. <laughs> That's a typical view, isn't it? You never give anybody any credit for trying. We would get right up your nose if I was to become a star, wouldn't it? You'd like to see me get out of here, wouldn't you? Hey? See me get on and get to the top. You know, I've been making films all over the world. Hollywood, Madrid and Rome. Acting up against all that international crumpet. <laughs> Big Requiel Welsh, Werner Lisa. And all the rest of them. Yeah. Irene really handles more your mark. <laughs> I should be very proud to be up against Miss Irene Handel. Because <laughs> don't you make no mistake. It could happen. No, I've got, I got a feeling, Dad. This, this is what I've been waiting for. I mean, I don't that this could happen. You see, the, the, the one job where, where, where education don't matter. You, you don't need A-levels to become an actor. I mean, for, for years I've been stuck here, not knowing which way to go and how to uh, express myself. I never thought about acting. Well, I mean, it happens for other people. Why not me? I'm not a bad looking fella. <laughs> and if Hollywood got hold of me, they'd, they'd do me teeth and me nose and pin me ears back. <laughs> I could look as good as any of them. <laughs> So could King Kong if they did that to him. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming, Harold. It don't happen to blokes like you. It does! Miss Sean Connery, he was a lorry driver. He's the same age as I am. So I've got more hair than he has. <laughs> now, I didn't expect any help from you. But you'll be the first on board my yacht when it happens, won't you, eh? I've got news for you. You're barred. <laughs> the minute I see you walking up the gangplank, I shall say to the captain, full steam ahead. And try and get him with the propellers. <laughs> the only yacht you'll ever have is the plastic one you have in your bath. Now, I shall say. Now, if you wouldn't mind serving the dinner, I've got a lot to do. The entire cast is meeting here at 8 o'clock. Hey? Eh? The first reading of a new play by Rupert Fafanes Muir. The drama of the Northwest Frontier, entitled. Up your Kyber. Up your <laughs> Entitled Guilt. The white man's burden. And introducing ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba, Howell Steptoe as Lieutenant Carstairs, VC and Bob. The first battalion, the Royal Indian Rifles. In a Polish cavalry uniform. <laughs> well, died in altered, they won't notice the difference. Yeah, we're round here, mate. There'll be more turbans in the audience than on the stage. <laughs> what do you want to round here for? Because the karate.
karate club is using the hole tonight. Now come on, hurry up. There you are, I'll get that down, yeah. It's chicken madras and, and mutton vindaloo. <laughs> Might help you get into character. I don't want you. Look, Dad, to be here. Look, please, Dad, I don't ask you for much. Please go out. It's too cold. We'll go to bed then. It's too early. <laughs> right. I'm warning you. <laughs> this is very important to me. One word out of place, and the next item on the menu will be curried ghoulies. <laughs> Darling, and take my coat, darling. Yes, darling. Now, come on in, darling. There's a good girl. That. Now, I, I don't think you know everyone. Uh, this is this is Nemony Wagstaff, our new leading lady. Well, how'd you do? Hello. I've heard so much about you. Really? All, all good, I hope. Well, what happened uh, to Miss Bannerman? Ah, uh, yes, what indeed. <laughs> oh, darling, what happened? Uh, well, no, 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 let, 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 let me tell this. Um, uh, you know she was married, don't you? No, I did not. Uh, yes, yes, she was, she was married to Norman who works the lights. Uh, well, it was all a bit umpty, and we, we knew that something was going to happen. Anyway, you remember Jack, who played um, Jim in John Loves Jane? <laughs> oh. well, he was married to Janice, who played his mother. Anyway, it, it seems that Jack came back last night, packed his bags and scarpered. <laughs> There's an empty desk in the gas board showrooms today. <laughs> he went, just like that. He scarpered with the Bannerman. I think they've gone up and set up in production on their own. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're, we're terribly lucky to have got hold of Nem Nemony, who's, who's got tremendous experience. Really? Oh, yes, a right little pro, aren't you, darling? <laughs> I should look forward to playing opposite you, Harold. I don't know if I don't let you down. I'm very inexperienced. I'm sure not in everything. <laughs> oh, I say. What an absolutely super set. Straight out of love on the dough. This is our home. Oh, I didn't mean to be rude. May I introduce my father? Father, this is Sir Rupert Fainsmuir, our producer. How do you do? Delighted. I'm sorry to hear about your illness. If you get caught short, the bog's outside. Did <laughs> <laughs> you can't pretend, everyone? Well, nothing, nothing alcoholic, then. You've got an awful lot to get on with. Well, how about some kekka? Cocoa, Super, yeah. super, so, yeah. lovely, yes. Go make some kekka. Now, I want to watch. Go make some kekka. <laughs> Milk? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for the delay. Yes, well, come on now, let's let's get started. Now you've you've got your words, haven't you? Right. Um, I've managed to gather some uh, props together, and I'm sure you'll be pleased with them. Uh, got some costumes as well. Lovely, lovely. And I must say that I've read the play, and I, I think it's. Quite magnificent. Thank you, dear boy. I do hope that your confidence in me will not be misplaced. 
ها فدا مك بوت اما كا ها اب تو ماس اي اب يا بوي اي اي نيفر بين رونغ يت اند اني واي اي 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 لاف ذا تشالنج اوف بريزنتينغ ا نيو فيس تو ماي بابليك ناو ذا 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 بلاي از سيت ذا بلاي از سيت ان ا بيليغل فورت اون ذا انديان فرونت يا during the afghan rising now a punitive expedition by the british has failed and they are now surrounded by 50000 savage tribesmen whom of course we don't see <laughs> and now the, the the dramatist person i pardon the cast are as follows the officer commanding the fort that's uh, sir langham uh, willoughby that that's that's you uh, jeremy and his wife lady cecilia that's deirdre and their beautiful daughter nemeni That's that's you, Nemedy. She is Ariadne, and her fiance is Lieutenant Carstairs. That's that's you, Harold. Now, also in the fort are Gunga Din. That's Manville blacking up again. I'm afraid, Ducky. <laughs> and the Mad Muller, which of course is you, Timmy. A uh, Rupert, darling. Look, I don't want to knock it at this stage, but don't you think the plot is just a teensy weensy bit old-fashioned for 1972? I mean. Uh, I I thought you'd read the play, darling. Oh, I have, darling. Well, then surely you you must see that that is deliberate. I mean, the whole thing is an analogy between the British in India and the Americans in Vietnam. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, that is the first thing what struck me. I mean, that's why I liked it so much. It has a profound social message. Uh, I think for us all. Thank you, Harold. Thank God for an intelligent actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've probably had more time to study it than my fellow artists. Now, the the only other character in the play is uh, the 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 government envoy. That is the Right Honourable Lord Carruthers QC, uh, who has been sef- specially sent out by uh, Queen Victoria to negotiate with the Mad Muller. Uh, now, unfortunately, we we've got a bit of a problem there. Oh, what's that then? Uh, Reg hasn't turned up. Oh, sorry. Oh. No. He had all his teeth taken out this morning, and he won't get his new set in until after our opening night. <laughs> and it's a it's it's a very difficult part to cast, Lord Carruthers. I mean, he's he's a man in his seventies, um, got great military bearing, a very distinguished career behind him, sort of patrician-like face, small, slight of stature, of course. Come, and get it. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> Say that again. Say what again? What you just said. Come and get it. It's remarkable. <laughs> Such resonance. Walk over to that door. Come, <laughs> turn round. <laughs> Now, come down here. Down, down here, down here, down here. That's. It's amazing. Incredible. Now, pardon. <laughs> I'm not having a minute. It is perfect. I mean, just look at that face. It's absolutely perfect. He is the right honourable Lord Carruthers to a team. That is my dad, and he's an ignorant old get. <laughs> If he's in it, believe me, he's going to ruin it. No, I don't think so. Have you ever been on the stage before? No. Yes. When? 1418 war. Two <laughs> concerts. Of course, you've done everything, haven't you? If we needed a brain surgeon, you'd better first up. Get the coco on. Look, Rupert, could I have a word with you, please, uh, in, in private? Yes, certainly. Why don't you sod off? <laughs> Rupert, honestly, he's, he's, got, he's going to make a mess of it. I mean, he, he can't play a lord with a voice like that. But he talks like you. Oh, yes, but I, I mean, I'm like Michael Caine. I'm not going to put it on. Like he did in Zulu. Well, <laughs> perhaps your father can as well. I can't. He just calls us cowcakes. <laughs> Mr. Steptoe, can you can you speak with an upper class accent? You mean uh, something like this, old boy? You <laughs> see, <laughs> perfect. They're not perfect. It's rotten. Of course, uh, if you prefer it a little more Sandhurst, I knew one fellow once with an extraordinary accent. <laughs> All like this. Shut up. <laughs> He won't be able to keep it up because because he, he's a right good blind. But I think we'll take a chance, Mister oh, Mister oh, Stepto. Yes. Would, would you would you care to play Lord Carruthers? Ah, oh, give it a go. Oh, Might be a giggle. <laughs> I think you'll find the part is marked for you. Well, I'm warning you. Hey, he's going to make a mess of it. 
It's on your own heads. <laughs> All right. Now we'll go from the top. Now, now, when the play begins, it is dusk. There's, there's been a lull in the fighting. All is quiet. Now, when the curtain rises, we discover Lieutenant Carstairs on the veranda with Ariadne in his arms. Over here. Right. Go. <laughs> it's very quiet out there. Yeah. It's unbelievably quiet. Yeah. Do you think they will attack before morning? No. <laughs> You're very taciturn, aren't you? Yeah. Johnny, <laughs> you've got a big part, haven't you? <laughs> you see, he's no professional. Now, come along, please. No temperaments now. Come on, keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> what chance do you think we have, darling? Uh, well, one chance in a million. If, uh, if I can slip away tonight, and if I can get to Delhi in the morning... Ding dong, the bells begin to chime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Mr. 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 Steptoe, now, now, really, you're you're not giving your son a chance. Now, now, please, come on, let's let's take it seriously. All right, carry on, Harold. You're very good. <laughs> your speech, Lemony. Do you think we will get out of this alive? He won't if he don't turn it in. <laughs> Please! <laughs> so, your, your father and, and, and the, oh, sorry, and the general is in the study now, uh, discussing the terms they will present to the Mad Muller. Don't you mean the terms the Mad Muller will present to us? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I, I, I knew it was foolish to try to deceive a soldier's daughter, but believe me, Harriet, me, those fiends will not take you alive. I have saved two bullets for us, <laughs> and um, that's why we will always be together. My darling. Right, now the door bursts open and in strides Lord Carruthers and the General. Now, now Lord Carruthers is very, very angry. All right, go. I won't bother about the action, get I'll work on that later. Fine. I am not satisfied, Willoughby. Her Majesty's government has been seriously misled. <laughs> misled? Oh, oh, sorry. Misled. But needles to say. Yes, I told you he's going to spoil it. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all right. Go, go on, go on. Needless to say, I have a plan. I bring a sausage from a magic. Message! <laughs> Put your bleeding glasses on! Oh, look, Rupert. Could, couldn't we rewrite it? I mean, couldn't we have him stand at the French windows and get killed by a stray bullet? <laughs> no, 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 no. Please carry on. What is the sausage? <laughs> The message you bring. It is a message from Her Majesty the Queen to the Afghan chief. The Afghan chief. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the Afghan chief. It is a message of peace and goodwill between our two peoples, and as a gesture of friendship, she has instructed me to present to the Mad Muller a string of polopenies. <laughs> Polo ponies! <laughs> well, that's not my fault. The bleeding type, and she ran the words into each other. It's just only my script. I've got to say it. And I knew that they were pol polo ponies. <laughs> well, she'd hardly give him a string of polopenies now, would she? <laughs> well, I don't know what Afghans have for breakfast. <laughs> you can't read, you can't think, and you can't act. And this whole production's going to be a fiasco! No, 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 please, come on, darlings, it's early days, early days. It's just a reason. This is in ruins before it's even started! <laughs> you great book!
critic from the East Acton Gazette. Oh, do come in. Uh, Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I've got one next door. Your father sent me in to see if you'd uh, join in with the celebrations. Uh, no. If you'll excuse me, I've got a bit of an headache. It's, it's a very demanding part. I'm <laughs> quite exhausted. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Enjoyed the show very much. Oh, there's just one thing you said in the third act that confused me. What, what exactly is a polopoly? <laughs> <laughs> just a slip of the tongue. It was a mistake. That is all. Oh, I see. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
tit trouble? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, there are little devils, aren't they? <laughs> I'll leave the tile out for the milkman, but he never puts it out with them. Um, may I have a word with you? Certainly, Doctor. Uh, would you like a cup of tea? Yes, thank you, I'd love one. Uh, in the kitchen, if you don't mind. I'm afraid the lounge is looking a bit like a motorway cafe at the moment. Uh, <laughs> yes. Must be a lot of work for you to do on your own, what with uh, looking after your father as well. Yeah, you can say that again, I'm knackered. <laughs> uh, and now we have another teapot somewhere. Oh, yes, here we are. Hope this is all right. <laughs> God, what has he done in this? <laughs> I mean, you never know in this house. You'd be surprised some of the things what he puts in them. Would you care to sit down? Thank you. <laughs> you'd like to do your hours with that stuck on your trousers, would you? <laughs> with the old bedside render and stuff a bit, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, raspberry jam all over the cat and pain. Right then. And, uh, how is my uh, aged P? Be able to get up soon, will he? Um, no, I'm afraid not. Oh, how long do you think then? Well, it's difficult to say, but he might be in bed for some considerable time. What? All day? <laughs> I'm sure, sure he can get up and do a bit of graft, can't he? Oh, I'm afraid not, not for a long while. You see, your father's not getting any younger. What's wrong with him, then? Oh, it's his back. He's got some disc trouble. He's in great pain every time he moves. He don't move all that much at the best of times. <laughs> the only effective remedy is complete bed rest. I see. How long for? Well, as I say, we don't know. It might take days, might take weeks. Weeks! Well, I can't look out of him for weeks. I mean, I've got work to do. I, I, I can't do it. I mean, I'm shagged out of the night when I get home as it is. I mean, I'm always falling asleep on a plank. If it wasn't for the horse knowing the way home, we'd never get here some night. Very sorry, Mr. Steptober. There really is nothing we can do except wait. Ginger snaps or custard creams? <laughs> I do try and look on the bright side. You know, sometimes these things clear up overnight, just like that. Oh, not with him. He'll hang it out. Look, if, he, if he's as bad as, as what you say he is, well, shouldn't he be in, in hospital? I mean, that's what pays my stamps for. I bung him in hospital. I, I don't mind coming to see him, I don't. No, I'm afraid not. You see, there really is a terrible shortage of beds. I bang him under floor, then. <laughs> He's got a bad back. They do him the world of good. A nice hot floor. You don't seem to be very sympathetic towards him. Sympath... Oh, look, Doctor, I know him. He's not as bad as he makes out. You think he's ill. Believe me, you bang him in an hospital, stretch him on the floor, and he'll make the quickest recovery known to medical science. That'd be a miracle cure. Like them Filipino doctors. It's out of the question. We only use hospital beds in an emergency. Besides, he can recover much more quickly at home. Ah, oh, don't you believe it. Nobody's got me on the move. He'll be sitting up there like the Caliph of Baghdad, rubbing his bleeding lamp and expect me to appear every five minutes. Hello! <laughs> Here are, he's starting. that tree? Coming, oh great one! <laughs> Keep your turban on! Hey, sure, there must be something you can do. I mean, can't you give him a shot of something? Like a point three oh three. Have you tried like a pork chop? I've got a tin of gramophone needles out here. <laughs> no, the only remedy is rest and understanding. Now, as he gets older, this is going to happen to him more and more often. Huh? You're just going to have to face it. He's going to need constant attention. You don't have to spell it out. I can see it all stretching out before me. I've seen it on the pictures. Poor, lonely, 40-year-old Jane Wyman, devoting her life the nagging, moaning, miserable Dame May Whitty. <laughs> and on the pictures, somebody used to come along. Herbert Marshall, usually. He'd take her glasses off. She'd let her hair down. The old cow would kick the bucket and they'd all live happy ever after. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not going to happen to me. Nobody's going to let my hair down. He'd all bleed him full out before he's finished with me. <laughs> Well, I'll pop in again in a few days' time. In the meantime, this should ease the pain a little. Thank you, Doctor. How many do I take? <laughs> now for your father. And these are sleeping tablets. Aaron! Where's that tree? 
You better give me some more, these won't last long. <laughs> I'll leave it to you to do it, then. Come on, Doc. And I'll call in again on Friday. Yes, well, if I can drag myself to the door, I shall let you in. the champagne, the caviar and pressed duck, wasn't it, sir? <laughs> Where the bleeding hell have you been? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. There's been trouble in the kitchen. The wine waiter informs me that the Viv Clicko 55 has run out and would sir mind making do with the PG Tip 74. Never mind about that all now. What did old Crippin say? Don't take no notice of him, he's a liar. I am ill. Yes, I know. Hey? What did he say? Nothing. Now let's talk about it now. What do you say? Nothing. What's wrong with me? Nothing, nothing. Nothing to worry about. Look, just put it out of your mind. Forget it. You've had a good life. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're hiding something from me. What's wrong with me? Don't think of the future, Dad. Think of the past. All those carefree golden days of your youth. The long, hot summers. Walking. Through the meadows, hand in hand, a pretty girl on your arm. The butterflies, the babbling brook, oh, the scent of new mown hay. Those smocked farmers drinking from their jugs of cider as they lean on their pitchforks, taking a well-earned rest. The flowers. What's wrong with me? You're dying! <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dying. I've got a bad back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. I, I didn't mean to be the first to tell you. I, I didn't mean to let it out. Drink your tea quickly! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what did he say? He said... He said... You've only got three days to live. <laughs> <laughs> Starting from... Now! Tick tock! Tick tock! Tick tock! Tick tock! Hey, you callous little toe rag! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the agony! Oh. Oh. oh, what did he really say, Harold? He says you've got a bad back. I know I've got a bad back. Well, that shows what a good doctor he is, doesn't it? <laughs> I told him I'd got a bad back. I want to know why I've got a bad back. Lack of use. <laughs> he says you've got to get out of bed and do the housework. No, he didn't. He told me I'd have to stay in bed all the time, perhaps for weeks. Oh, dear. Well, I don't know who's going to look after you, then. Well, you are, ain't you? <laughs> me? No. I've just come off the phone. I've been booking up my holiday. I'm going to Cornwall for the month. Cornwall? Yes. I'm going to do a bit of shark fishing. A bit of the old surfing. Da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Wipe out! You wouldn't like to come with me, would you? How can I surf? I can hardly surface. Oh, shut <laughs> Well, is there anything else you want before I go and pack them? You can't go, Harold. I can't move. Oh, well, I'll tell you what I'll do then. I'll bring up some tins of food and I shall leave them on the end of a bed. <laughs> You'll be able to reach them, they're all right. Yeah, yeah. Cheerio, then. I shall send you a card. I shall leave the front door open and the doctor can bring it out when he calls on Friday. <laughs> Hello. See you next month. <laughs> Harold, don't leave me. I'm ill. I really am ill this time. I won't ask for much. Harold! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Septo! Oh, I got some bad news for you. I'm from the Cornish police. Your son Harold has been took by a man eating pilchard. <laughs> 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 I might as 
as well have been. I'm going to be eaten by a little sprat now anyway. <laughs> Drink your tea. Thanks, so. I won't be a burden to you, honestly. I know you've a lot to do. I know it's going to be hard on you. But I'm not skiving. Honest, I'm not. I know that. I was just mucking about. Just getting a few laughs in before it all turns sour. <laughs> <laughs> you fellas are what? What else did he say? Nothing more than what he told you. You've got some dish trouble in your back. You've got to stay in bed till he gets better. Well, how are you going to manage? I don't know. Well, we'll manage. We always do. You're a good boy, Harold. I appreciate it. Really, I do. <coughs> Is there anything I can get you? No, I don't want anything. I don't want to bother you. That's all right. I, I don't mind. What do you want? No, no. I don't want to be any trouble. I don't mind. What do you want? I wouldn't mind another cup of tea. That one's cold. Right. <laughs> another tea? Fine. An hour old. Yes, Dad? Have the papers come? Yes, Dad. Could you bring them up with you? Yes, Dad. <laughs> oh, and... Harold! <laughs> yes, Dad? Do you think you could make a little sandwich? Yes, Dad. Uh, what do you want? Oh, I don't mind. Anything. Uh, let's see. Uh, corned beef? No. <laughs> uh, cheese and tomato? No. Uh, peanut butter and pickle? Ew. <laughs> well, what do you want, then? Oh, anything. I don't mind. I could go a nice sausage sandwich. We've got no sausages. Well, couldn't you go out and get some, then? No, we could Yes, yes, so I, I'll go and get some sausages then. Oh, and... Harold! <laughs> yes? Harold. Yes? I want to go to the lavatory. <laughs> well, I can't do that for you. <laughs> I'll get you a milk bottle. <laughs> Oh, God! We ain't got a bedpan! Oh, I tell you, I'll go out and get one. No, I can't use them. Never could use them. You'd have to carry me. Carry you? There and back. There and back. Three times a day. Yes, all right. Yes, come on in. Up. Here we go. Little bony. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. You're a good boy, Harold. So you said. <laughs> Could you bring the television up uh, and, and the telephone? Right. After. Yes, all right. <laughs> oh. Oh. Could, could you go round to the library? I need some books. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, oh. <laughs> and then later on, pop down to the off license and yeah, get some beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, be careful, you're urging me. I'm sorry, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello. <laughs> oh, hello, Clarence. How are you? Oh, terrible. I'm in agony. Every time I move, it's been a fortnight now. Hmm? Harold? Oh, he's hopeless. I haven't seen him for half an hour. <laughs> All he thinks of is himself and pleasure. Oh, Eric and Arthur come round last night. Spent a couple of hours. Brahms and Liszt we got. <laughs> Eric had a bird with him. Hmm. About 50. Her husband's just died. You can guess what from, from the look of her. <laughs> She's promised to come round sometime and duff up me pillows. <coughs> huh? Where's my back? No chance. Oh well. Cheer out. Seeing you. Harold! Harold! <laughs> come, 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 come. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, Dad. I just come in from shopping. What's it, what do you want? Racing in Kempton Park. <laughs> That's all. I'll shout when I want you. <laughs> well, bring me books from the library. Yeah, yeah. Read it. Read it. Don't like him. Read it. That was a waste of time, wasn't it? I've nothing to read now. Got some more to dump clothes yet. Yeah, well, take that tray down with you. I hate the smell of old food hanging about. Did you like the steak? Is that what it was? Terrible. Old gristle and garlic. You know I don't like garlic. I thought it would bring out the flavour. Well, it didn't. And it was fried. You know I like it grilled. Well, the grill's broken. Well, you can mend it, can't you? You're not hopeless, are you? And the peas were like bullets. If that's the best you can do, don't. I'd sooner starve. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll do better tonight. I've got a nice bit of fish. I don't like fish. <laughs> what is it? Uh, place. Didn't they have no Dover sole? <laughs> They're about 30 bob a time. <laughs> if I'm not worth 30 bob when I'm ill, I'll make do with the place. Well, I'll get you a Dover soul then. An arrow! <laughs> now what? <laughs> Did you go out in the rounds today? No, no, I didn't. Why not? Because, if you recall, I've been down the library, round the fish shop, up the off licence twice, round the chemist, down the grocers, and in between I've been up and down them stairs 23 times. And I'm not going out again. Why? To get an hundred yards of rope. What for? I'm going to make a noose out of one end and put it round my neck. I'm going to put the other end in your end. And I would be grateful if in future you don't shout. Just pull. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know you want me. Might even help me get up the stairs quicker. <laughs> Believe me, them stairs is beginning to look like the north face of the Eiger. <laughs> uh, I see. It's wearing off, is it? I'm becoming a burden, am I? No, right, whatever, the bigger one! <laughs> the rest assured, I shall carry out my <laughs> filial duties. And now, if you could please refrain from wanting anything for the next 15 minutes. I'm going to put my feet in water. Right. Stum. Yes, I turned the volume on. I can't hear a thing.
potatoes. So watch your feet. How they can dance. That's funny. There was two cans of lager in here this morning. <laughs> well, I didn't have them. And I don't think the horses had them. <laughs> so that leaves that perpendicular punts upstairs. <laughs> but also accounts for the gradual disappearance of all the pink ones in my licorice also. here for quite a while yet. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, this'll help you make you feel better. Oh. Did you cook me something nice for my tea? Bacon sausage and egg, is it? Yes, you like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Some pickled onions and four slices of bread and butter. Yes, and two tins of lager and half a pound of liquor is all salt. Pink ones. Eh? <laughs> you can have all of that later, but first, you're going to have a blanket, but... Because <laughs> yeah, you is a dirty little old man. <laughs> I mean, you've been in bed for nearly three weeks now. And you haven't had a proper wash, have you? Here we go. That's <laughs> Important of all, we must let you get bed sore. Must we? Bed sore. Never a skinny little bum like yours is most detestable. Surgical spirit. That is the thing. Watch it. That stuff stings. Stop it. 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 A miracle cure! But turn a 
turns into a grotto. A grotty grotto. <laughs> Just eaten. Yeah. Oh well, I'd moved it anyway. Now what do you think you're doing? I'm moving my queen. Fine, your queen. That's my bishop. The salt cellar's my queen. <laughs> no, it ain't. The pepper pot's your queen. Have you done all your pieces? I'm gonna play properly. Have you been moving anything else of mine? I don't know now. That egg cup yours? Yeah. Oh, I've moved it. Twice. <laughs> that's my king's rook, that is. Oh, that's it, isn't it? I mean, that's cocked up my Sicilian defence. <laughs> oh, it's most of the time carrying on. I mean, I was trying out Novachensky's opening gambit from the World Championships. No wonder it won't come off. Oh, look, we've got to get a proper set if we're going to play properly. All right, set him up again, we'll give it another go. Does the Mr. Albert Stepto live here? Yeah, he does. So the old fella's still alive, eh? Yeah, he's alive, just. Well, it's like <laughs> just standing out here like a couple of raw prawns, eh? <laughs> Come in, please. Uh, he's through there, in the lounge. Well, well, well! Who are you? <laughs> You don't recognise me, do you? No. Uh, that's not surprising. It's 45 years since you last saw me. I was a knee-eye to an abo's wife front when I left. <laughs> oh, and Arthur. Arthur? Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. Arthur? It can't be. Not Arthur. Arthur, yeah, Arthur. <laughs> Harold, it's Arthur. <laughs> Is it? I can't believe it after all these years. Little Arthur. Ah, the old fella, now don't get yourself so upset. Let's have a Captain Cook at you. Yeah, I'd never forget you. A bit small, a bit older, but I'd never forget you. <laughs> Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, 
Harold, this is your brother. I've got no brother. Yes, you have, son. Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. Arthur. He's your elder brother. I don't mean daft, I'm an only child. I've always been an only child. <laughs> Arthur's your stepbrother. Mr. What do you mean, stepbrother? <laughs> well, I met Arthur's mother before I met your mother. I see. And? Well, we was engaged for six years. And then one night I couldn't control myself anymore. <laughs> and after that, she went off me. I'm not bloody well surprised. <laughs> And then Arthur come along. But she wouldn't marry me. She got in the cricket club. <laughs> she said athletics and, and marriage didn't mix. And then she got picked for the women's cricket team to Australia. Leg spinner she was. And I never saw her again. And then I met your mother and that was that. A very nice story. That's very savoury. How many more little bastards you got spread around the world? <laughs> Don't you talk to me like that! Well, you certainly used to put it around, didn't you? You never told me that you had another son. Well, so long ago. I haven't seen him since he was two years old. I never even know if he was still alive. Well, I am alive. And kicking. So you're my kid brother, eh? Such would appear. Well, I reckon this calls for a celebration. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Let's open up a few tubes of Fosters. I brought some with me. They said it was harder to find over here than an Arab at a bar mitzvah. I reckon your beer is flatter than a witch's tip. There you go. <laughs> Have a real drink. To the Stepto family. Long may it be reunited. To me two sons. Come on now, drink up. Cheers. Oh, cripes, I needed that. And my mouth was as dry as a kangaroo's jockstrap. <laughs> So much I want to ask you, Arthur. But um, first things first, where are you staying? Well, as a matter of fact, Pop, I uh, haven't made up my mind yet. I've just fallen out of the flame on aeroplane. But I understand there's millions of DOS houses up around the Earl's Court, so I suppose I'll make my way up there. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. Why not? You can stay here with us. We ain't got no room. Of course we have. We make room. You don't want your brother staying with strangers. He's only arrived for all the way from Australia. You can have Harold's room. Hey, wait a minute. Harold can put up a bed down here for the time being. Down here? That's very decent of you, Harold. I'm obliged to you. But, but, but well, you... that's settled in. Ah, very nice. Oh, I must say, it's great to be back in the old country again. I can't tell you, Dad, what it means to me to meet you again. Man, young Harold. A fine boy. Yeah, a man needs roots. Roots? You're not stopping it. I mean, long. I mean, it is a holiday. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking of settling down here for good. I've been about a bit, you know. I've done a bit just about everything. Cattle droving, sheep shearing, walkabout, gold mining, pearl fishing. Oh, how marvellous. Yeah, it's much better than it is over here. You'll be bored to tears here. All we've got here is the bingo and the telly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's rotten when the rainy season starts and all. Rain? Love it. Love it. When you spend as long as I have in the outback, you've no idea how beautiful a drop of rain is. No, no, I'm getting a bit too long in the tooth for gallivanting. I think it's time for me to settle right down. And where better than in good old Pommy land with your old dad and your kid brother? Excuse <laughs> me. How long are you going to keep my taxi waiting out here? Found the flaming crows. I forgot all about you. Five pound ten, please. Five pound ten? Five pound ten, and I turned the clock off when you got out of the cab. Yeah, maybe you did, but I think you turned the bastard on when I left Melbourne. It's still <laughs> five pound ten. What, to drive me from London Airport? I'm not a flaming darkie, you know. It's still five pound ten. Five pound ten. Um, Harold, I don't seem to have any pommy money on me. I wonder if you'd mind paying Ned Kelly here. What, five pound ten? Yeah, give the man the money, eh, Harold? I'll give it back to you. Too right, as soon as I've cashed me travellers' checks. Course he will. Oh, it's marvellous to see you again, Arthur. <laughs> How's your mother? Oh, Patrice sad. Sorry to say, the old woman passed on last month. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah, it came as a great shock. Never been crook in her life. Active right up to the last. What happened to her? Keeled over with a half-shaved merino ram between her legs. <laughs> New South Wales Steering Championships it was. She would have won too. 
39 seconds left and she only had the back legs to go. <laughs> oh, great tragedy. Yeah. yeah, she was onto a whole carton of swan lager too. Not that that would have lasted long, you understand. <laughs> here, you want another eat? Uh, no, I'll go in here. Yeah. Did she ever uh, marry? Oh, no, no, not her. She shacked up for a while with an eye tie plonk grower, but uh, <laughs> uh, he used to beat the bejesus out of her. And one night he'd come home, real Adrian Christie was. <laughs> she bashed him over the head with a bottle of his uh, Vino Redo. She loaded up the Ford and we didn't stop for 300 miles. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was a school teacher. <laughs> So it's a lovely woman, my mother was. I don't believe a drop of alcohol ever passed her lips, did it, father? Oh, no. Not your mother. Salvation Army, she was. Yeah, that's right. Very pious lady. Yeah? Oh, it's strange how a fella can have two Sheilas so different, eh? <laughs> oh, it's very amusing. Yeah. Well, well, now that you're home, Arthur, we'd better start making plans for your future. What plans? Well, now he's come to stay with us, he'd have to think about work, won't he? Work? Oh, yeah. Well, good idea. I'll take you down to the Labour Exchange first thing in the morning. They're digging a new tube across London, and I know they uses a lot of Commonwealth Labour. No, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't travel 12,000 miles just to dig my way across flaming London. I'm so sorry. Perhaps you as a trade or a profession. Well, uh, no, not exactly. No. Uh, uh, Neither of you. Oh, no, I'm different. I mean, I don't need one. I've got my own business. Well, it's a family business, and Arthur's family he can come in with us. Hi. Yeah, you're always moaning about how hard you have to work. Arthur can take some of the load off you. I'll make him a partner. That's a very generous offer, which I'm delighted to accept, Pop. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. I've sweated my guts out building up this business. I'm not going to stand by and watch a perfect stranger walking in. Not a perfect stranger. He is to me. He isn't to me, he's me son. Yeah. Me elder son. No, no. Leave him, leave him be, Bob. Leave him be. You'll get over it. Must come as a bit of a shock to the young fella, me turning up like that out of the blue. He's bound to be a bit jealous. I can't understand it after all I've done for him. Well, he'll get over it. Just give him time. In the meantime, I think I'll go upstairs and uh, clean up a bit. But first, I'll pop outside and point Percy at the porcelain. And then... <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to take you and young Harold up to town and buy you some slap-up tucker in a bonza frog calf. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, just one thing, Dad. Uh, I wonder if you could see your way clear to lending me a few quid. Uh, just until I get me traveller's checks cashed, you understand? Of course. Anything you want. Five? Ten? Yeah, I better make it twenty. Uh, no, on second, uh, make it around fifty, then I won't have to keep coming back to you. Fifty it is. Oh, it's good to see you again, Arthur. You don't know what this means to me, having me two sons around me. You've made an old man very happy. Well, it's great to be back home, Dad. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute, I've got a little prezzy for you. That's official then, is it? He's rowed himself in. Yeah, he, he's agreed to join the firm, yeah. I don't suppose he needed much persuading. Well, I can't understand you taking this attitude. Why are you so bitter against him? He is your brother. How do you know? You've never seen him before. I mean, a middle-aged out work Australian turns up here. You've never seen him. It could be anybody. He says he's your son, and you believe him. You're so gullible. Oh, he's my son, all right. All them photographs he showed me of me and him and his mother, and the things he told me he could never have known of yet. Oh, he's me son, all right. He's got my ears and me nose. <laughs> and your money. <laughs> Where is he now? He's up in bed. I just took his breakfast up. See? You never brought me my breakfast up in my life. <laughs> it's another thing. It makes me sick to see the way you runs round after him. I don't run round after him. Get him up, then. If he's a partner, let him do his full share. He can't. He's not well. 
to our weather, playing up his old war wound. Oh, he's got a war wound too, has he? He runs in a family, don't he? <laughs> Nobody else can do any work around here except me. He was a prisoner of war of the Japanese. Oh, but they were bleeding glad to get rid of him, I know. <laughs> he certainly ain't seen the rising sun since he's been here. <laughs> You're very bitter, Harold. It's not like you. It is like me. You don't know me, do you, eh? Forty years you've had me, four days you've had him, and you knows him better than you knows me. Sitting up all night, yarning with him and laughing with him, I've heard ya, and buying him drinks. That's another thing. He soon got used to our rotten beer, hasn't he? You know what? I'm jealous. I'm bitter. I am resentful. But I can start bollock on a block and work as hard as I can. That's it. Giving away on a plate to a fellow who ain't put nothing into the business. Ah, oh, that's where you're wrong, yes. He's put up his shares in lieu of capital. His shares? What shares? He's invested all his money in an Australian nickel mine. You've heard of Poseidon? Has he got shares in that? No, the one next door to it. <laughs> the Poseidon Reef runs right under his land. Oh, my God. Oh, he's got the lot there. Nickel, gold, opals, tin, steel... Bread pudding, marmalade... <laughs> you daft pillock. You, you, you can't have a steel mine. You make steel. You'd believe anything, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's better than Poseidon. Everything he's got's on top. You don't have to dig for it. <laughs> he's got oil, too. Naturally, yes. Yeah. Oh, right on top. <laughs> he reckons if you walk across his land in a pair of spike boots, you'll leave a trail of little gushers behind you. <laughs> don't you believe all this? Of course I do. He told me. That is a con man. He's a nebbish. He's a punce. <laughs> you don't like him, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Like him. You'll never give me no boomerang. <laughs> it makes me sick to see the way you've been taken in by him. You ain't got time for me anymore. Oh, that's not true. It is true. In the way you run drawn after him. You think the sun shines out of his ear holes? <laughs> if that's all existed, I, 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 I don't exist anymore. Oh, no. It's, it's only natural that a man should have some affection for his firstborn. What? Well, you five him if you want to, but I'm warning you, I'm not going to stand by and see everything that I've worked for handing on a plate to one of your illegitimate sprogs. <laughs> There's enough for all of us. Where? Oh, tell me, where? Now, how many more's going to turn up once the word gets around? None. There's only you and Arthur. I mean, you side more bleeding off springs than an Aberdeen Angus, you know? <laughs> You'll be stuck on a stud farm with a rosette behind your ear hole. <laughs> then you'd have a warning of business, wouldn't you? We'll finish up with a bigger board than ICI's got. <laughs> no, we won't. There'll only be the three of us. You've been very childish, Harold. Arthur's just the man for this firm. We've never had a, a good financial brain run in the business. Thank you very much. I've managed perfectly well up to now. Well, Arthur says our books is in a shocking state. Oh, you sold him the books, have you? You had no right. I don't want every Tom, Dick or Harry knowing how much director's fees I have been voted. Well, <laughs> he says the first thing he wants to change is our in and out column. Oh, but he does. I'll put it all in. He takes it all out. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about, does Arthur. And I don't. Well, I don't blame you. You do your best. It's only that Arthur... Well... He's got a better education than you have. Everybody's got a better education than I have. I spent more time on the awesome car than I ever did in school. Well, you didn't like school. You was always up in the wag. Well, there's no reason for not sending me. You, you should mind me, Carl. I couldn't. You were too big. <laughs> you were heavier than me when you was 11. <laughs> I tried to make you to go to school, but you kept threatening to wallop me. What? <laughs> when I was 11? Yeah, I was frightened of you. I couldn't control you. I tried to send you to Borstal, but they wouldn't have you. <laughs> Again, thank you very much. What an idyllic childhood I did have. Well, it's true. It ain't true. I never stood a chance, mate. I mean, the number of times you said to me, I don't go to school today, it's a lovely day. Why don't you come out and around, get a bit of fresh air? No wonder I couldn't keep up. Well, you didn't use to mind. Of course I didn't mind. I was so far behind at school, it was humiliating. 
I was kept back in the same class for three years running. I was the only bloke in the juniors in long trousers. <laughs> if I got into the army, I never would have been able to learn to read and write. You crippled my mind, you did. And now you blame it all on me. And I could have been a doctor or a band leader or something. <laughs> I always liked music. That's another thing you never helped me with. I mean, my teacher said that I was musically inclined and you ought to encourage me. But you wouldn't buy me a piano, would you now? You taught me how to whistle instead. <laughs> I brought you that piano off the round. It had 32 notes missing. <laughs> I wouldn't even play chopsticks on it. The only time I did play, the lid used to fall right across my fingers. Aversion therapy, they call that today. No, mate, I never stood a chance. No use blaming me for your own shortcomings. I'm Arthur's father too, and he's doing all right. Oh, because he got away from you. Well, I wish it'd been the other way around. I wish I'd have been the illegitimate one. I wish I'd have been taken away. I would have mounted to something then, I could tell you. I would have turned out a bloody sight better than he is. I never knew you wanted to be a band leader. <laughs> you never bothered to find out, did you? Hey? That's another thing I can't forgive. Because you just wasn't interested. You were more concerned with yourself than you was with my future. And now what little bit I've managed to build up for myself. You want me to share it with someone else. Well, it's not on, Dad. You're going to have to choose. It's either me or him. Oh, that's not fair, Harold. You can't ask a man to choose between his sons just like that. That's OK. It's dead simple. Either he goes or I goes. Make up your mind. I can't, Harold. Right, that's it. Then. Harold! No, no, I should have gone years ago. I had to stay here and look after you. Well, it's different now. It's his turn. It's all changed. Forty years I've had you. It's his go. And God help you, mate. <laughs> but what about the business? Let him run the business, if you can get him up, that is. Oh, no, Harold. Harold, he can't go now. Not now. It's time to go out and the round. I've completed my last round for this firm. But who's going to do it, then? May I suggest that you tippy time to the house and turf Wallaby Jim of the Islands out there. <laughs> Give him a map, put him on a cart and let him get on with it. He won't be able to drive that horse. You know she won't go out with anyone but you. No one else can handle her. Then I suggest he sells some of his nickel shares and buys himself a kangaroo. <laughs> he should be at home with one of them. He'll be able to hop round in no time. <laughs> now, Harold! Yeah. I'm starting that on my own. No, no, Harold. Goodbye. No, Harold, don't go. Come back. I need you. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be back. What, Dad? Afternoon. Oh, oh. The old war wound's playing me up again. Oh, now I know how you must feel, Dad. Oh. Well, still, perhaps in a couple of days, I'll be able to get up and uh, give you a hand round the station. Yeah, bad time. Yeah, well, I've been uh, going through the books again, Dad. I haven't just been laying up there scratching me kabuni, you know. <laughs> and I've come up with one or two ideas. Now, it seems we give young Harold ten shillings a day for his lunch. Now, I reckon if we give him sandwiches instead, that would be a net saving of about... He's oh, gone. Gone? Gone where? He's walked out. Oh, that is a blow. Still, he'll be back when his gut starts rumbling. Uh, in the meantime, Dad, I wonder if you could see your way clear to lending me another fiver. There's a horse running at Kempton Park. This yeah, hour. and there's another one out in the stable, raring to go as well. <laughs> Get your clothes on. <laughs>
Stan. What's it doing then? I've been looking for you for three weeks now. Oh yeah? Lonnie Jenkins told me where you were. The landlady let me in. I'll put a shilling in. There is no need to, thank you very much. I'm quite capable of taking care of my own beating. Well, what brings you in this neck of the woods then? Well, I was worried about you. Haven't heard from you. And I was wondering how you were getting along. Oh, quite well, thank you. I do very nicely. You staying on here then? Oh, good heavens, no. This is only temporary accommodation. <laughs> Don't find something more suitable. Now, I've seen a very nice little muse cottage what I'm thinking of renting. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all right then? Oh, yes, yes, I'm uh, very nice. The business is coming on fine. Got a horse and cart then? Oh, yes, I'm uh, very pleased with it. It's a uh, four year old sauce, 17 hands. It's a beautiful animal. I'm especially pleased with the cart. Brand new, of course. Bigger than yours. Well, then I need to have it for the volume of trade, what I'm doing. Oh, good. <laughs> Aren't you going to put jam on him? You always like jam on him. I ain't got no jam. So I'm on a diet, so I could give him up jam. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we eat too much, we businessmen. We're digging our graves with our own teeth, as my specialist puts it. <laughs> Harold. Yeah? Come on, Harold, please. I've been through all that before. I don't see the advantage of discussing it anymore. I need you, Harold. The, the, the business needs you. I'm oh, sure so your new business manager can look after it perfectly well. He's gone. He's gone? Where? Hopped it. Back to Australia, I think. You were right, Harold. He, he was a, a punce, a lazy, no good con. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, a blow like him. He wouldn't take the awesome car out. Oh, he took it out all right. It's the trouble he didn't bring it back. <laughs> Flogged it. Huh? Never seen him since. Swine. No, well, what to expect? They're not all like me, you know. I don't know what to do. I only got a horse and cart now. Please, Harold, come back. I, I can't manage on my own. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I would like to help you, really, I would. But it's, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, I've got a whole yard full of people depending upon me now. Because I, I, I wouldn't ask you to close up just like that. I thought we might come to a business arrangement, put it on a proper business footing, a merger between your firm and mine. <laughs> we could call it Steptoe and Steptoe. A reverse takeover, you mean? <laughs> you know, yes, it's uh, quite a common arrangement when a small, thriving firm like mine appears to merge with a larger firm, but in effect takes it over. Yeah, that's very interesting, I must admit. I suppose we could enter into exploratory dialogue. Mind you, the assets of the both companies have to be fully analysed. I don't... Huh? That didn't last long, did it? She's got that well rigged. I ain't got no more shillings. Yeah, I only carry notes with me, you see. <laughs> Difficult. I'll tell you what, Harold. Why don't we carry on our explanatory dialogue back home? The fire's in, I banked it up before I left. Oh, well, of course. I, I, I mean, psychologically, I will be at a disadvantage talking to you on your home ground. I got steak and kidney pie in the oven. I know. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> and sherry trifle. And, 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 and jam. Jam. I got jam, too. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, I suppose the venue of the talks doesn't necessarily affect the outcome. Yes, I will concede the point. Right. Shall we go now? You do realise these is only exploratory talks? Oh, of course. Well, come on, what are we waiting for, don't we? <laughs>